Hey everyone, it's Ellen. Um, I am going to be working on this hutch a little bit more today. Um, I'm hoping you can see it really well. I have to move the hutch around a little bit in order to get a better view of it. Right now, I've got it completely prepped. I'm not painting the very inside. Um, the back, I might be taking off and painting that. I'm not sure yet. Um, but just to go over, so the reason I'm actually doing this is because people are always asking me how do you do this and why do you do this? <laughs> so I thought it explained a little bit better. Um, so painting um, first starts with cleaning and I use a lot of fusion mineral paint products which have um, a cleaner called TSP and it's a TSP that you can wipe on, wipe off, and then you don't have to go over it again with water to get it all off. It just, it's a really nice one. Um, some of the other TSPs are a little bit different, where you wipe them on, wipe them off, but then you have to do a water clean after that. So I like that. That's the first thing is cleaning the piece to get any oils off it, fingerprints, dirt. Some of these pieces come in and they're just absolutely filthy. So, um, and then from there we do a scuff sand all over because unlike chalk paint, uh, chalk paint you can just paint over top of the piece but um, I have never ever liked chalk paint. I don't like the pigment of it. Um, there might be one out there that I might like better but I don't particularly like uh, chalk paint. So when fusion paint came across my doorstep and I tried it I thought you know this stuff is really pretty good. Um, so, uh, cleaning it and then scuff sanding it is necessary with fusion paint. So scuff sanding is just using a 220 uh, grit um, and you just basically go over it um, very, very, oh, very, very briefly and just scuff it up a little bit. Um, just to take the sheen off of it. You can see places here where I've taken a little bit more than the sheen off of it, where I've had to fix a dent, or I've had to use wood filler to actually fill in a place like over here. So, But in general, if it's not got damage or it doesn't need fixing, you can just use the um, uh, 220 grit sandpaper to just scuff it up. This is a board. This is one of the drawer. Sorry. Um, covered pieces that I have that uh, I just scuffed this up. You can see the scratch marks on it a little bit there. I hope you can see that. Um, and then here, anywhere there, where there's a really intricate piece that would take a lot of really heavy duty, <laughs> delicate sanding, I use a fusion product called Ultra Grip. And Ultra Grip just gets painted in and it allows the paint to stick to it. It has to dry for 12 hours. So this has already been prepped and dried and the rest of it's been scuff sanded. And when you scuff sand, what you're doing is you're raising the tooth on the piece a little bit so that this paint will stick to it. So this piece is going to be painted black. Um, I am using Fusion's Coal Black, which is this one. Uh, and then we're going to blend this piece, which is another really nice technique using Fusion's Midnight Blue. Beautiful color. And then we're going to accent it with this little sample pot of Fusion paint called Lichen. So I know that might sound kind of strange, but um, I did a little, this, this is not a very good sample stick, but there's black, midnight blue, and lichen, and it really doesn't look like much now, but when we get going, and in a couple of days, you'll see the difference, and it will be pretty amazing. So, what I'm going to do today is paint the bottom part of this piece. Um, when I paint, I paint fairly quickly, but I'm just getting the paint on and trying to smooth it out a little bit, and then... Um, I will let it dry and in, a, in an hour, a couple of hours, I'll do a second coat and then I let the second coat dry overnight. So with dark colors like this black, um, you have to, you, you probably only use two coats because it covers really, really well. This paint has such deep um, pigment to it that it just covers beautifully. 
Um, if it was white or a really light color, like light yellow, very pale pink or light green, then you would probably do three coats because um, it, it's necessary to cover over the dark wood bit. So, so I'm going to start painting. Um, I know it's kind of boring to watch someone paint, um, but this paint, this hutch will be all black with blue and lichen, which is a very, almost a gray green um, accent to it. And it'll be a blended color, so it will be absolutely beautiful when it's done. So if you have any comments or questions, I can't, I'm just by myself, so I can't answer them right now. But if you leave a comment, um, then I will answer it later by post. And also, if you would like to share this or get anybody else to join us, I would really appreciate it because I'm trying to build up my Facebook uh, group so that um, we can get rolling on this stuff. I want to teach you guys a little bit about painting. Um, if you have a piece that you want done and you want to get a hold of me, our phone number is on our Facebook page, Flendrance Interiors. You can get a hold of me there as well. So I'm going to start. I did get... All right, I'm on a little roller chair here that I that I need myself. My wheels get stuck sometimes. Um, I am going to start by just giving these drawers another little coat here. Um, this drawer is stuck, so it's got. No, it's not gonna come up. It's got one deep drawer and one top drawer that's a lot uh, narrower. I'll show you how to get that draw. It's not stuck really permanently. I'm really hoping you can see this. If you're not, I will check in a minute. I will check on you there. But I paint pretty fast. This is some, a really good coverage paint. It's amazing. I have painted with other paints. and In fact, last week I tried doing a piece with another <laughs> brand of paint and I literally put it away. I just said, okay, that's enough. It's just enough. You want it to go on nice and smooth. So getting it on is one thing, um, smoothing it out is another. So with the tops, I just rattle it on there. Doesn't look like much right now and then smooth it out. So it goes on pretty nicely. So now with this, I've got it on and I've got a good coat on. So I would just smooth it out in one direction. And this is basically a second coat, but I'm not putting it on really thick. Um, and I'm not putting it on perfectly like I might if I was doing it for, for real right now. But um, the, um, the piece should generally need only two coats with this dark color. Beautiful color. It's called Cool Black. It's fusion mineral paint and it is absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous color to work with. I love it. I just did another piece um, with it that I'm going to be adding gold accents to and it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see that this top piece, of course, hasn't been painted before. So the one coat that I'm putting on now doesn't really look like much. Okay, how are we? Everybody can see that? If you can see it, please let me know because I really don't know. I can't see my my camera from that side. Um, I'm just going to give this door a quick swoosh. And we'll just go up. The first coat, I am not too concerned about it being uh, perfect in any way, shape, or form. It's just... Normally, I take doors off. I take all the hardware off because I just think it looks nicer. If you have it so that you're, you know, trying to work around it and everything, it looks pretty tacky. Okay, so that's basically, did not that look awful? Look terrible. <laughs> but now I will go like this and I will smooth out the paint for that first bit in there. And we'll do the top sides it just looks I know sometimes when I paint I feel like a little kindergartner or something you know like I can't paint within the lines and for this one particularly I'm just going right over the hinge because I kind of want the hinge to be a bit of gold and black so pardon my kindergarten painting I'm trying to paint 
and hold it in the camera lens at the same time because I don't have a camera person. Hint, hint to my husband who could come out and rescue me, but, um, okay, so we'll straighten all this out. So that's kind of how the first coat looks. Um, I'm just going to straighten this over here because I can do it on my lap easy enough. Sorry, I'll be right back. I'm just going to get this done and over with. Okay, so that went back up there now. And honestly, wear gloves. Look what happens to you. It's horrible. See? <laughs> I go in sometimes, I forget to put gloves on because I get all excited about painting and I go in and I'm like, oh my goodness, it takes me an hour just to get. Um, paint off myself. Sometimes I forget and I go to the store and I'm like, oh dear, <laughs> because that's why I wear an apron too. I wear an apron because I'm pretty messy, but I like to be messy. I like to paint because you don't have to get all dolled up, people, if you're painting or doing anything fancy dancy. You just come out and be kind of a sloppy mess. It's kind of fun. Like playing in the mud or something, you know. Okay. Now, doesn't that look just awful? I mean, the way I paint is shameful, really, but you know what? It works. I don't know if you can see me in there. Okay, so now this I would straighten out, usually, generally going in one direction. And the first coat is going to be a thin, almost uh, translucent coat because you don't want it to be thick with this, well with any painting really, you don't want to blob it on and then have your um, paint running and making dog marks and all that sort of thing. So here's a little thing, I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, I got paint inside the interior there and I don't want to be painting the interior and I also don't want to be painting that one bar up the side I think I'm not sure yet what I'm doing there but this is what I'm going to do um, with this is take a wet one just an ordinary wet one any type will do and wrap it around your finger and while the paint is still wet, you can pretty much do what you want with it. And then just wipe it across. So then I don't have to be super fussy about um, how I paint because I can always go back and just wipe it off a little bit like that. Just keep going. Some people tape it off, but I just find taping everything off is a lot. I, I do tape off glass, generally. I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with this bar. I might paint up here, but I might just leave it as well. So, we're going to go down this. Oh, I'm going to go in here, actually. Now, this brush is pretty big. It's a, it's a really nice um, synthetic brush. It's a two-inch round, a two-inch oval. But when I get to little bits, like in here, if you can see that, um, I don't really particularly want to be using a big, big heavy brush. I mean, you can. So I will use my little, my little brush here. And I've got a bit of blue on it, so it might show up blue right now. But it gets into these little, little bits here quite nicely, actually. And again, I don't mind going back and forth to get the paint on but once it's on i will smooth it out in one direction only and again i'm painting kind of like a kindergartner but you'll see in the end it all works out so there's my one coat there and we'll go down here there's so many ways of going back to fix something that you know you don't have to be don't want to be doing that, but you don't want to be 
person I would tape everything off and I would be extremely nervous about doing something wrong and then you know messing it up but now I know that I can just paint and then there's a bazillion ways to go back and fix something or tape something off or add a flu if you need to so I have to get that drawer out of there some of these bits are you know they just you know, they resist the paint a little bit, but they do. So again, go one one way. Um, they resist the paint a little bit, but they do eventually get covered over. So, I don't know. It's kind of fun painting. I like it. Um, you, you do have to learn how to use the paints, any paint really, even chalk paint if you're a chalk painter. But um, it's really fun to start into a piece and then realize you can't actually do it. So here again, I'm kind of messy along this side here, um, but I can take my my rag and I can go back and just wipe off the excess along the very, very edge that I don't want there. So this is going to be a really stunning piece. Usually when I'm painting, I start thinking about the piece and what it looks like and what it kind of reminds me of and what it will look like when it's all done. I'm taking the puppies out. Okay. And sometimes I actually name the piece, so I'm kind of, kind of thinking of calling this one Madonna. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe the black. The black has something to do with it, obviously. But we'll see if you guys have any better suggestions for a name. Let me know because kind of stumped on this one. It's going to be very, maybe Black Widow. I don't know. Something pretty cool anyway. It's going to be very pretty. So here I'm going along the side, but I'm also, um, what I do in the end is I go underneath uh, before I, you know, hand a piece in. I will go underneath and paint just the underside of the trim there. So right now I'm not too worried about it. Um, I could fuss and go back under there and try and be super careful, but for now I don't really care. And like I said, the first coat looks just horrible. But that's pretty nice. You can see it's starting to look pretty cool. Um, I have no idea what to call this. Uh, kind of a I don't know, it's got like a kind of a dark feel to it, but actually people are really wanting these nice dark pieces lately. And so if I can be of help or if somebody wants a piece done custom, then that's what we do. I gotta get in these corners. And oftentimes I will keep two brushes in my hands um, because this one, this little half inch or inch round will get right into these little bits here. Into the very, 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 very corners and up into the edges nicely. Where these bigger ones, they'll get in there too, but they're a little bit more work. I'm just gonna, first coat, I am just literally smearing on pretty much. You see me going in different directions. But that's not how I'm going to leave it, because you do not want to be leaving your paint in different directions. So once I get it on, this paint has a really nice open time, which is pretty much how long you can play with it before it gets uh, sticky and you can't move it anymore. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to smooth everything out. I have to move this a bit. It's on rollers, so I can move it fairly easily. Now, I can feel the paint starting to get a little bit sticky. The nice thing about this paint is it's water-based, so I'm going to spray it just a little bit and a little bit more. You can see it kind of turns it color, but it gives me 
a little bit of a longer open time so that I can actually make sure I've got everything I need covered. And it gives me the ability to sort of spread it all out a little bit better. It's gonna be so pretty. Now I'm gonna go down in one direction. It still looks horrible. Like the first coat always, always, always looks horrible. Looks like you've missed a bunch of stuff or you don't care about your painting. <laughs> looks like, you know, you were five years old trying to paint something. I never was good at coloring books either. I mean, I guess I kind of was, but I was always a little sloppy color. Do you remember them always saying, don't go out of the lines? But I always did. It's always different. Okay, so can you see that a little bit better? You can see it really looks streaky. It really looks kind of half done, and it is. <laughs> um, here's another area where it's, you know, I'm going to add a little tiny bit more there because it's a little bit too uncovered. It just doesn't want to take there for some reason. So I'm sometimes when I see a spot that just really doesn't want to take, I think I might have missed sanding it because it acts, the old varnish acts as a resist, right? And then it um, doesn't take the paint very well. So let's go back to, you can see it's starting to look kind of cool. I like it. It's going to be very, very dramatic when it's done. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. So let's go to here. Um, I'm to try this bit of the bottom here. I did have to use some um, wood filler on this piece. dry and then um, you go back and sand it and as you're sanding it you finish sort of your sculpting of it because I don't know if you can see that in that light um, to sculpt out the the wood filler that you use and this is it right here and you never notice the difference can you tell the difference where I put the wood filler to me it looks like it's the original piece but I know <laughs> that I fixed like a two inch patch of, of stuff there. Okay. Well, yeah, you can see why in these little tiny bits here, hey, you can see why I prefer to use the half inch or the one inch round because doing those little intricate trims like that with big fat brushes is not fun. <laughs> I'm gonna go in here. Get this just basically a basic coat on is all we want today. And I will go back and forth. And then I will smooth in one direction. I always um, sand in between coats as well, like not sand. I do what's called a buff sand so it's just taking the the um, paint and just buffing it with a really light 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 um, sandpaper I'll show you guys on another time but it's just super super light and what it does is it completely smooths out any bits of uh, dust or anything that you might have gotten I just noticed a couple of spots up here in fixing <laughs> okay so Onto this piece. I have this drawer in here still. Oh, that's annoying. 
annoying, annoying that I didn't take it out already. Okay. Horrible looking, I know, right? I'll show you how I'm going to take this drawer out because I need to get it out right now, so bear with me for a second while I get my screwdriver. Yes! So, this is what we do. The screwdriver, put it in, and pull. And that is how we get it out because we forgot to take it out in the first place. So this is the top, I'm just going to give this drawer a little coat and then I'm going to um, put this one on the floor and let it dry out. It's not a pretty color. It almost looks blue in the light, but it's, it's called coal black and it's not a, wouldn't even be in a more appropriate, maybe midnight black or something. Can you guys see that? really pretty. It's going to be super spinning. Go side to side in one direction and that can come out. One thing about this paint too is the first coat will dry within like 30 minutes. So as I'm painting one part I can actually go around and paint um, you know, touch-ups on another part. It's really awful. You know what? I think I might have forgotten to sand this bar. I'm not sure. The paint seems to be not going on as well there, so I'm going to double-check on that later and maybe sand it if I need to once everything's dried up. It just doesn't look right to me, so we shall see. Um, I'm going to just finish up this very bottom bit here. just for giggles and we'll get an idea of how it's going to look. So these go like that. I don't want it all the way in because I don't want it to... I don't want it to... Um... Oh, that's pretty. Oh, la la. Now see here, I don't know if you can see this. Oh. I got some paint on the side of my drawer earlier, but instead of fussing and think I've been a big fail, what I will do before this piece goes out is I will just take my sandpaper and sand it off. I think I'm going to really, really love this piece. So if you guys have any idea for names, oh lordy, look at this. This is the side. Of course, I've got all that to do yet, huh? It's a lot of painting. Um, that's the first coat, lots to finish, but I just wanted to get the basics started and show you a little bit about the prep. Um, and like I said, when I put paint on, I'm not too careful, but then I will go one direction back and forth so that it's an even stroke. And the first coats always look atrocious. But I will finish painting this uh, one coat, and I'll post a picture tonight. But if you have any suggestions for names for this girl, I would appreciate it because I think it's going to be really stunning, actually. And when we start doing the paint blending... Um, which is a really uh, very specific type of technique. So this won't stay jet black, most of it will be, 
but we'll be using the midnight blue and the lichen to do paint blending as well and it's going to be really pretty so i'm going to log off i hope that taught you a few things um this is going to take probably a week or so yeah black beauty would be awesome i think so too that's a nice name actually i really like that especially because i love horses too um but uh, do you guys have any suggestions for this back wall? I'm thinking of doing it lichen, which is the really soft gray green. I might even put a really pretty transfer on this. Um, if I do a transfer, I have to do a light colored back wall, but it should look pretty neat. I'm really excited to get this one finished. Beautiful piece. This is solid wood, actually, which is Kind of unusual. I'm guessing about 70, 80 years old. So there you go. I'm going to log off. Go get a drink of water because it's kind of hot in this light here. And um, I'll post a picture of first coat tonight and then maybe tomorrow we'll do more painting. Thanks guys. Share this with your friends and like, comment, whatever. And um, one day soon in the next month or so we'll be starting a YouTube channel. And then I can, you know, give you more information. I could do a little bit better videos. <laughs> okay, thanks a bunch. Bye.